it may be upsetting, but I hope you see the positives within me. So, I'm enabled by two disabilities, Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome and Asperger's Syndrome. And I've brought some materials and leaflets if you want to find out more afterwards. Um, Asperger's is on the autistic spectrum. Research has shown that the two conditions are often connected. Many people who live with my rare connective tissue disorder also live on the autistic spectrum, but not in every case. I'll start by talking about Asperger's syndrome. I'd say it's my minor disability, as it's not easy to see or understand, but it does have a big impact on my life. I have high-functioning Asperger's, which means I struggle with communication and social interaction. This neurodiverse condition means that I see, hear and feel the world differently to others. It cannot be cured and it is a fundamental part of me and my personality, my identity. I don't have a learning disability like many with autism. It's like the wiring in my brain forms differently. So it means that I have difficulty understanding facial expressions, people's tone and voice, and jokes and sarcasm. I can be a very funny and sarcastic person myself, but not always recognise it from others. I am very blunt and have to work really hard every day to filter my thoughts and not say them out loud, as I easily offend and seem to be rude to people who do not know me well. I have really good language skills, but struggle to engage eye contact, or know how to interact and communicate well in busy, noisy and group discussions. I take longer to process information and feelings, I understand clear written English rather than slang or terms of phrase. I can tell I've been on Google last night, can I? <laughs> I had to jam up again on it. My carers assist me with telephone calls, mainly because I can't hold the phone up here for that length of time, but also because I get too anxious, I don't know when to speak in the conversation, and this can lead to a meltdown where I cry a lot and struggle to speak. I am too over caring and wear my heart on my sleeve. I often can't recognise other people's feelings and intentions. I can appear to be insensitive when I don't intend to be, and I seek alone time when feeling overloaded by noise and people. I get highly focused on the interests and things in my life that make me happy to the extent that without my carer's prompts I would not bother to eat properly, look after my well-being or my personal hygiene. The carers in my life try and help me make sense when I'm confused with things and also ensure I do all the right things to maintain a healthy life but have a good balance of wheelchair basketball, adapted swimming and running my social enterprise, disabilityroadmap.co.uk. I was diagnosed as an adult with Asperger's and spent a lot of teenage years being told I was attention seeking and that there's nothing wrong with you. I went through long periods of mental health distress and self-harm and the coping strategies for managing my autism are all self-taught and I try my best to learn from my mistakes and do things differently in the future. So now we move on to, it's a bit of a gospel, it took me some while to learn how to say it, Ellis Danlos Syndrome. It's a connective tissue disorder which affects the collagen glue inside your body. And I have lived with this since birth, but I only became aware of it in my teenage years around 16, when I began getting more and more clumsy and having severe pain, 
when just walking around and doing basic teenage things. Between the age of 16 and 26 was a mixture of daily pain, ranging from paracetamol to needing morphine and paramedics called out on a regular basis. Severe fatigue and exhaustion where I could sleep for an entire week. Nobody had any answers and because the label had already been said that I was attention seeking, it stuck like glue. I was becoming less and less able to walk, exhausted with severe pain. It was only when I spoke to other people on Facebook that I discovered the condition Ellis Danlos Syndrome and the one main researcher and charity Ellis Danlos Support UK. From that day forward my life changed for the better. I realised after speaking with my mum that all the symptoms matched up. All the unanswered questions of this genetic illness were ringing too many bells to not get it investigated properly. Other people with the illness known as zebras on Facebook were able to assist me in finding a consultant that had one heard of the condition and two would take it seriously enough to diagnose me and signpost me in the right direction. Two months before my 26th birthday, I went to see Dr. Shulvik Das at Chapel Allerton Lanes. My mum attended with me and I had taken the time to write a brief medical history of the last 10 years of my life for the doctor to look over. He then looked at all my joints using something called the Baton Scale. This is where they look at all the major joints in your body and see how far they bend in the wrong direction without injuring you. So things like, that goes too far. I can touch my hands behind my back without, I can touch the floor as well, but I'll fall <laughs> um, And I nearly got full marks in that, and that was not a good thing. So he told us the devastating news that you have EDS, or ehlers danlos Syndrome, and it's a genetic condition that you have lived with since birth. We do not know yet which type you have, but if you have one of the worst types, you can have a very short life expectancy. And there's not many NHS doctors in the UK that can help you with this. We had no idea it ran in our family genetics at all, so it was a complete shock. You will have to learn how to manage your symptoms and flare-ups the best you can. We will also provide you with a powered wheelchair so that you can manage your pain and exhaustion levels better and to slow down deterioration, as many young people with EDS end up bed-bound and unable to digest food anymore. He also said, you are doing well, to have got to the age of 26, because I was just shy on my 26th birthday. He said, I cannot tell you how long you live for, but we are now putting the right things in place to give you the best chance possible. I remember turning round to look at my mum, and she was crying, sitting on a chair, and then travelling home on public transport, transport from Leeds seemed to take forever. So since then, it's been 12 years since the diagnosis and I'm now using my third powered wheelchair. I've had to teach myself how to use it as I've never had a long hospital stay to be taught wheelchair skills. I take a combination of around 30 to 40 medicines a day and I've survived sepsis twice due to bowel and bladder failure which is currently being managed with medication and the correct fluids and nutrition. The daily pain and tiredness has not gone away, but I have learnt about pacing and self-management of pain, and I have gone from being able to do very little and falling asleep every afternoon 
to now playing regularly for Calderdale wheelchair basketball as a defender. My posture and stamina has improved no end by my carers assisting me to do adaptive swimming in the heated pool. When I first started going two years ago, I would struggle to swim around eight lengths with this floor. Because I learned to swim as a child at school, you know, like you go on swimming trips every week. And my body wanted to do it and my muscles didn't go into spasm and say, no, I hurt, don't swim. Um, so I struggled to swim about eight lengths with this floor. And then I'd come home, slurring my words, and spend the next two days in my hospital bed at home, unable to sit up, use my arms to feed myself, or to walk. And at the moment, two years later on, I'm doing a sponsored adapted swim, and it's going really well. I'm fundraising to get an appropriate basketball wheelchair to meet my needs. And with a lot of teeth grimacing, and rests for oxygen, I'm achieving between 30 to 35 adapted lengths once or twice a week. I can walk a little bit inside my ground floor flat, but it causes me severe pain very quickly and my balance is affected. Two of my priorities from the day I was diagnosed was to concentrate every day on not getting pressure sores but also maintaining my ability to stand and walk within my home. If I become unwell with an infection or a virus, I rapidly lose the ability to do anything with my arms or legs, or even to sit up straight. I still become tired easier, easily and often slur my words like a drunken who's had 20 pints of beer and I have never drunk alcohol. It may sound like a horrible story, and one that I wouldn't wish on anyone, but to me, when I was diagnosed with both Asperger's and EDS syndrome at the age of 25, my life suddenly made sense and clicked together. I have the intelligence and organisation skills from my Asperger's to enable me to think outside the box to manage my EDS syndrome to the best of my abilities. It will be a lifelong battle, but I am one of the lucky ones. Ellis Danlos was first discovered in 1910, and is still very misunderstood by the NHS. Don't get me wrong here, I'm not, I'm not saying the NHS is rubbish, but I'm still alive, but so many times it could have gone down the wrong path due to medical professionals not wishing to understand or learn more about this condition as it affects so many different parts of your body and we all know that doctors don't like to work together and communicate effectively. So um, one of the main important parts to me is my support group. So the Ellis Dunlos Support UK Charity holds regular meetings all around the UK, either on Zoom or in person, and I go to the one in Leeds, where I can meet fellow zebras and people with my condition. We support each other, we listen to the ups and downs, and we raise money and keep the research going. And up to, like today, they've now found 14 different types of Ellis Danlos. As far as I am aware, I live with the hypermobile type. The type that shouldn't kill me as long as I don't get complications or misdiagnosed or given the wrong treatments, but will still give me daily pain and tiredness for my entire life, however long it will be. As for the other 13 types, they shorten life significantly. Babies are born with the condition and only lives days and weeks. It passes down the generations, so I've had to make the brave decision to not have my own children, so instead I have a pet guinea pig who is my son. Life is about living and taking every opportunity that comes along, not sitting and giving up, feeling sorry for yourself, as that will not change anything. 
Disability Roadmap, my social enterprise, is all about using my stories and lived experience to improve things in the world of social care and disability to leave a legacy for our future generations. Thank you.